the editor, I'm sorry to bother you. I'm writing in regard to my article and give the number. The paper has been reviewed and received minor revisions and make sure you give them some information. Is there anything we can do to expedite the process, perhaps by providing additional suggestions for peer reviewers? Then, of course, what about if your paper gets rejected? Communication at this point is also very important because, of course, rejection happens all the time. Rejection happens more often than not. If you generally um, um, feel that your research was important, well done, well written and deserves to reach the journal's audience, but you get rejected, don't forget that you are able to write to the editor and make an appeal. We've done this ourselves on a number of occasions in cases where we felt that our papers had been rejected for unfair reasons. Don't just sit there. Don't just take it right to the editor and ask for an appeal, say your reasons why you feel that the rejection was unfair, you can often get an appeal successfully done. So don't miss out on those chances to get your work published in those international journals, in those high profile journals. I have a number of examples of this from my own work, papers which did end up getting um, published in journals when they had initially been rejected. This is one of the keys to success as an international researcher. Again, happy to give a template to everybody um, at the end of this session. Indeed, don't miss out on these kinds of opportunities. So be confident and believe in your work. Things to avoid in terms of communication as an author, trying to add authors to papers once they've already been accepted. This is something you shouldn't do. Dear editor, thank you for reviewing my manuscript during your busy schedule. I have some minor modifications and I have added two authors. In addition, the introduction of a corresponding author is added to facilitate communication. Journals are not keen on dealing with the addition of authors after papers get accepted. This is something that raises lots of red flags at publishing companies. They think that you're just gifting authorship to colleagues now that the paper has been accepted. So this is something to avoid. You will have to fill in lots of paperwork if you do wish to add authors to a paper once it's been accepted. In addition then, when you make your proof corrections, when you do your proofing, your document files, Make sure you communicate effectively with the production editor. Make clear <clears throat> line by line comments for production. Be unambiguous. Keep your changes to a minimum because journals might charge you if changes are too extensive. All stages of the publication process, communication is key. Don't forget that online proofing requires up to date software. You'll be given a short deadline, so you'll need to stick to it. When your paper's accepted, congratulations, there's changes to make to the proof. Extensive changes incur a cost, so only making those changes that are 100% necessary. Changes to authorship or authorship order are very hard to make at this late stage. They will require signed permissions from all current authors. Going through the roof about your proof, what happens at this stage? If there are changes introduced to your proof that are incorrect or inaccurate or things that you didn't put there in the original paper, don't get angry with the production teams. They're often not subject area specialists. They're often trying to save space on journal pages. Don't panic. Online publications can easily be modified if there's no change to the content. So at this stage as well, a quick, polite email to the editor Get the issue fixed as fast as possible. Communication, communication, communication. At your submission stage, making a series of final checks can help. Authorship and author responsibilities, research integrity, translations, plagiarism and duplication, corrections, and so on. You'll need an ORCID ID often. If you don't have one, we recommend that you sign up for one to make those submissions to international journals. They're great as well because you can build a CV without doing anything. You can distinguish yourself in easy steps with an ORCID 
ID. Imagine in the UK looking for researchers with common surnames in China, looking for researchers with common family names, often very difficult to differentiate between people with the same family name. So the most important point of this training today, writing to editors, communication is key. Where's my paper? I've waited two months looking forward to an immediate reply. Real example of a bad email. Real example of a good email. Dear editor, I'm writing to ask if I can do something to help speed up my recent submission to your journal. Can I make some suggestions for additional peer reviewers? Writing to editors, communication is key. Hi, where's my paper? I've waited two months. Looking forward to an immediate reply is a real example of a bad email. Whereas, dear editor, I'm writing to ask if I can do something to help speed up my recent submission to your journal. Can I make some suggestions for additional peer reviewers is a real example of a good email, a well communicated email to an editor. So. Communication is key. We can help you maximize your success. If you have any questions, just ask in the chat box or get in touch with the team at Bentham Science Publishers after the webinar. Thank you so much for listening. We've discussed today the framework, the stages of the publishing cycle, and we've talked about good and bad communication, tips and tricks for good and bad communication. Thank you for listening. Gareth Dyke is my name. I see that there have been a number of questions put into the chat box. Let's have a quick look at these. Uh, we will provide everybody with the presentation, of course, like you'll get a video to the presentation. So thank you for that question. Um, I will circulate through my colleagues at Bentham Science um, information about preprint servers. So in response to that question, um, you will get from us a handout about the different kinds of preprint servers. So we'll give you a list. Uh, people are asking about how long to wait um, before communicating with editors. Um, well, usually six to eight weeks is a good time if you've written to the editor just two days ago, but no update. Well, give them a little bit more time than that before you write again. It might have been the weekend. It's been the Eid holiday in many parts of the world. So give it a bit of time. People are asking about free paid and free for publication journals. They don't tend to have different attitudes. They want to get the best content possible published in their journals. This is um, important to keep in mind. You should be picking reputable journals for your papers, journals that use peer review. So there shouldn't be any difference between free and paid for publication journals. So unfortunately, yeah, papers get rejected. It's how you deal with that rejection. Three reviewers were in favor and one was against, but it was still rejected. This is an editorial decision. So the editor has looked at what the contents of those reviews are. Don't forget that there will be lots of information that you may not have seen as an author. Often um, editors act as adjudicators between competing peer reviewers. I'd like to thank everybody um, for their contributions. I'd like to thank everybody um, for joining us today. It's been my pleasure indeed to give this presentation. Um, Yes, um, thank you so much. It is always possible to send an email directly to the editor. This is something that people um, do not do enough. They don't communicate directly with editors enough. My name's Gareth Dyke. This has been a Bentham Science Publishers presentation brought to you today in collaboration with Edance. Thank you so much for your time. And we will see you again in our next presentation next month, I hope. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.